Hello everyone, good morning. Hope you can hear me, you can see me. Well, bit of a, okay. So, good morning, welcome to another day of practice. Welcome to the Dharma Hall. Okay, Clive, thanks, thanks. Yes, welcome, welcome to you all. Welcome, if you're here for the first time, special and warm welcome. Welcome to all of those who will be watching the replay. Good morning. So, another day, another session with Nimala. She is waiting patiently in the backstage. So, I uh, won't be long. We are exploring the steam of a cup of tea, teachings on generosity, gratitude, and renunciation. We spoke about gratitude yesterday. Well, I think we'll spoke about it along the week. Speaking of gratitude, you know about Dana. I've let you have a little speech about Dana, so I won't take long about it, but it's basically, the only way we can keep on supporting all this work, all this practice, all this virtual and not virtual uh, Dharma Sangha, because this is a virtual meeting, but the Sangha is very real. We can sense it, we can feel it. It's, it pulsates every day. So, yeah, it's quite extraordinary, I have to say. So whatever you can give, every small donation is welcome and it supports us, helps us to support you, and to keep on supporting you. I've given you the link for the donations and I'll put the screen at the end so you can use, you can use it. Okay, so yes, good morning, David, uh, fellow uh, neighbor in Portugal. I haven't seen you for a while, I think. Welcome. So that's it for me. You know, you can ask your questions at the end of the session. We'll have practice, talk, and then whether you can raise your virtual hand and come on screen, whether you can put your questions in the chat. If you put your questions in the chat as it's a streaming, please type question in capital letters so that no matter know that it's a question that you're asking. So here we are. Take your seat, have a nice session. Thank you. Thank you, George, for your introduction. Good morning, everybody. So this week, it's a week of exploring generosity, which is goes together with gratitude. Gratitude is like the sister of generosity. <clears throat> Goes together with renunciation and with forgiving. And I mentioned yesterday that generosity is the first of the list of the 10 paramis, the 10 perfections, the 10 qualities, which as it says, bring us to the other shore. If we develop those qualities, there's freedom. And as I also already shared, I like the approach um, to the paramis as priorities rather than perfections. Because we try to be too perfect a lot of the time. 
which then causes blaming. And I think maybe even because it's the first of the list of the paramis, it's often overlooked. There's a tendency to downplay it. That we want to step over it. Ah, uh, yeah, let's get done with that, the generosity stuff. But dana, the practice of generosity, is so fundamental. It's deeply fundamental. It's the foundation upon which all else is built. And you might think yeah, it's easy to give and it might look like that at the first place, but in fact, it's really a practice. It's really a practice about learning from the giving and from the holding back to see for ourselves which feels best to learn about our subtle attachments that cause us to hold back or to see how we think about ourselves as a great person if we are giving easily. So it's about letting go, releasing, reflecting and insight. Generosity is a way we can relate to life. It's a quality which pulls us out of our egocentric behavior, it goes very deep. Like whole life becomes different. It, it looks completely different. It feels different life if we attune and being generous. Not in our ideas of what it does mean to be generous, but feeling what is going on in our hearts. If we don't explore and dive deeply in the issue of dana, and that doesn't mean at all only to give material things or to give money, and there is a lot more we can give. Like, in fact, all of the other like paramis are qualities we can give through generosity, like friendliness, <clears throat> patience. Equanimity. Energy. Generosity is not in the head, it's in the heart. And it's not just giving, it's a deep investigation about the mind and the heart. And that investigation, that will set us free. I talk tomorrow more about the motivations of um, dana, of giving, of generosity. The Buddha said that before giving, the mind of the giver is happy. And while giving, the mind of the giver is made peaceful. And after having given, the mind of the giver is uplifted. So we might find for ourselves that this is not always true for us, that we are giving, and I'm talking about the giving where we want to be generous, <clears throat> where we help, we would support somebody. And in fact, there is this holding back in us or where we want to be generous, but in fact, we can't. And generosity means also allowing the other person to be as they are doesn't mean to accept all their deeds and their how the way how they behave but just on a deep level seeing the humanity in all of us so today 
I like to focus on the aspect of forgiveness, which is part of generosity. Like without forgiving, giving ourselves and others, we can't have this open heart. We can't have the open hand goes together with the open heart. There's a whole, will be a holding back. There will be a sense of separation while the practice of dana is actually cutting through this sense of separation, opening up a view that we are all connected. If I give to you, it means giving to myself. But in fact, as humans, we do harm each other. We hurt each other with our thoughts, with our speech, with our actions. We misuse each other, we neglect each other's feelings, sometimes we are lying, sometimes we are dishonest. And to some of us, really unspeakable things happened in the past. Maybe in our childhood, maybe at night, maybe in the parking garage or on the street in marriage, maybe in the belief that we can walk safely through a park. And all this is leaving wounds. And without wanting to jump over the fact that we really need to feel these wounds, deeply like really feel what that all does and did to us it's only forgiving what can heal these wounds forgiving is a way of releasing re relieving our heart if relief to our heart so it's not bound anymore It's an uncovering of the heart. So forgiving is a sort of generosity. It's really part of like to be generous to ourselves. So we need to hold ourselves. So we need to bring kindness there. And if we're just blaming ourselves for something we have done or blame the other, there's not this flow of allowing not the flow of friendliness. And really, if something like painful happened to you, you don't need to bring friendliness there at the first place, not at all. Like anger has its place. It's had, it has its place and its time. And if we don't let go of it at some point, It catches us all our life. Generosity and forgiving is about freeing ourselves from aversion, from wanting, wanting things to be a certain way, from ignorance. And for all this, we need to forgive ourselves and others. And it doesn't mean to forget ourselves. It doesn't mean to jump over our pain and neglect it. It's so important that you hear that. And even if you want to forgive and like stay with that, feel your intention, you really would love to forgive. I mean, that's, there's a movement, inner movement. It might be that we are not able to that we are full of pain and judgment. Situation in which we have been felt excluded, hurt or abandoned, they remain extremely alive in our memory. Generosity opens up here with forgiveness and not with giving in, not with ignoring. If we do that, our pain will come through at another point. So it does also mean to say yes to our boundaries, to take care of our boundaries. Say yes and no when we really need to. OK, 
can mean that we take distance from somebody and that's fine, that we need time to pass by. Like forgiveness really needs time. It needs time and patience. Patience is another one of the paramis, Kanti. And there is a huge transformative power in the act of forgiving. And it doesn't even mean that we have to speak to the other person. It's something which really happens inside in our body, mind, heart. It has to do with ourselves, not with the other person. Forgiving has to do with ourselves, not with the other person. And we need to forgive in order to find peace. So we really feel the burden of holding on to our pain. And there's not much self-compassion in it if we don't address it, if we hold on that too long. It's like using the second arrow, how the Buddha puts it, like <clears throat> to suffer even more, to blame the other or ourselves. And as much as we would love to forgive, it's really about practicing generosity to our, towards ourselves in the sense of allowing, holding ourselves with compassion. Okay, and maybe this I can't forget now. And as much as we feel hurt by other people, we also do harm others. We feel right and the other person is wrong. We withdraw from people and get isolated and lonely. To be human does mean to make mistakes. Maybe we will only live some amount of love and compassion, some amount of that what we would love to give into this world. We are human. So forgiving this mean to tell our story, like ideally, like if that would be possible, or take away the word ideally, like to the person who did harm to us. If, there, if this person could listen to us, has such a healing effect, but often it's not the case. So just talk to somebody. Allow somebody to be part of that and to listen to you. And then to feel yourself unconditionally really feel what's going on, allowing the sensations in the body, allowing the stories in the mind and just lean back and give it a sense of, ah, oh, okay, this is going on. And then look into what you need from the other person or need from yourself. Maybe it's um, withdrawing, maybe it's distance, maybe an excuse. What do you need to trust again? And really important, again, forgiveness does not mean that we repress and forget what happened in the past. And certainly not that we approve of it. Forgiveness says yes to our feelings and no to that happening again. And we can bring forgiveness into our life like a practice. You can do it today. I really encourage you to do it today. Like to see where can you forgive yourself and start with the tiny things. Where can you give, forgive somebody else? Maybe forgiving someone who takes the right of way from you in the car or forgiving the postman that he rang the bell even though you put a sign on the bell not to ring. Small things. Forgiving the waitress for bringing a wrong meal. Forgiving our best friend for being grumpy and unfriendly. Forgiving our partner for forgetting something. But first look for yourself. That You will find countless occasions to practice generosity during the day. So I like to go with you into the meditation and our silent time together. Take your seat, take your place, and I invite you um, just for one or two minutes, if you like, just to give really good movements to your body, what 
ever feels appropriate to you. And that could also just involve some shaking of your body. Um, I know that talking about forgiveness and that stuff can bring up a lot for us and just let it through. And also if you're just tired, tensed in body, mind, heart, uh, just allow crazy movements, shaking, moving your mouth, your jaw, your face, making funny faces, stretching your body. If you have a feeling of numbness maybe or, like, oh, I can't move feeling, then move, get up and move. Uh, and use your breath not holding back mm, making maybe sounds just to release whatever needs to be released at this moment whatever can be released through some movement like it's clearing some energy paths in our body. Mm. And then just find your seat through sitting, through laying down on the earth, maybe on your sofa through standing mm. feeling your body how it feels at this very moment And just find for yourself where you could be more comfortable even, more letting go and more allowing towards your body just to, just to be, allowing the body not to hold on on anything, Just assuming for this moment, everything is just fine as it is. Nothing has to be different. And the suggestion is to be with your body, to feel into different body parts, into body spaces, the space of your head. And through feeling into the body spaces, bringing a bit more allowance there, accepting. Feeling the spaces in your shoulders, in your arms, your hands. It's 
So if this is <clears throat> beneficial for you, just move through different body parts and release them, bringing generosity to your body, allowing it to be as it is. And doing the same thing with your thoughts. Just allowing. A kind, friendly field of generosity towards your thoughts. And if you like, you can just practice as you wish. Just follow your own practice. Or you could <clears throat> tune into areas in your life where you're not so open and friendly with yourself where you're harsh with yourself, maybe blaming yourself, maybe something which came already up in this meditation. When I'm talking about allowance and friendliness, feeling, wow, there is tension, there is aversion, there's not wanting, there's irritation. impatience, restlessness. Maybe it's a situation from your life where you did behave in another way you would have wanted to. And where you're blaming yourself. Just feel how that feels in your body.
diving right into the sensations. Sensations which go together with the thought of not being good enough, of having done wrong, having done a mistake. Should <clears throat> and should not. Tuning into your body, feeling those sensations there. Maybe mind patterns which are running through. Can you bring kindness there, friendliness? Ah, yes. This is or was going on for me. And what do you need to soften there a little bit? Like if your body, mind, heart is very tight at this moment, you can just bring a hand into your face, gently, gently stroking your face, your cheeks. And just being aware how that feels in the body, in the heart. Giving yourself kind, friendly, compassionate contact. And don't forget to breathe. Maybe it's a hand on your chest, on your heart, and maybe a quite strong holding, like a really deep contact with your hand somewhere. And breathe. Maybe it helps to bring the corners of your mouth a little bit up and just feel where that softens in your body. Being close with yourself. Being aware of thoughts, feelings, emotions. And being so kind and friendly.
towards that all. Maybe having your hands there as support. And can you see some goodness there? Look for the goodness. Look for the caring aspect in the situation where you're blaming yourself for, where it's hard to forgive yourself. Maybe the goodness of just seeing how you're feeling. Just being close to that and rather than withdrawing and running away, you're here now with this beating heart. With this body which might feel comfortable, which might be in pain. with these thoughts which might be kind, compassionate, friendly thoughts, which might be resisting, full of hate, addressing that with kindness. Maybe you just want to stay with being kind to yourself, being kind with whatever is coming up as thoughts, as sensations, anchoring yourself again and again with your breath, with the earth, anything becomes too much at any point, open your eyes. Take a deep breath or maybe even take a few steps in your room. And you could bring your attention now to a situation where someone else has done harm to you, where you felt hurt, neglected, overseen, excluded. Just scanning into any situation which comes up for you, maybe not the most difficult one. You could take a very small situation. And just feel what's going on in your body with it. What thoughts are showing up?
What's happening inside when you're thinking about a situation where you felt hurt or mistreated, misused? And again, can you stay friendly towards what's coming up for you? This is what's going on for you. Wow. Yes. And there is the support of the breath and there is the support of the earth and your hands. And when you look at that other person, maybe you can see also his or her feelings, suffering, difficulties in life. Maybe you can see the goodness or some goodness in this other person. Look out for the goodness. Which doesn't mean to ignore your feelings, allowing it both to be there. Maybe grief, judgment, anger, blame. And goodness. And then drop the images. Just really coming back to this very moment, to the contact of the ground, the contact of your breath. Relating to the goodness of this moment. To the gifts you're getting right now, the gift of 
earth support the gift of the air to breathe the gift from the trees the gift from the sun from the water it's all here right now relate to the goodness in humans the genuine wish to love, to be free. May all beings get to enjoy the transformative power of forgiving. May all beings open up to the generosity of life support. May all beings live free of danger. May there be peace on our earth. <clears throat> so take your time to come back to the screen and really take your time like make movements stretches micro movements maybe So I wonder where you are now after this meditation. What comes up for you when talking about forgiveness? And again, the invitation from my side to look out for it in life, for the opportunities to forgive. The tea ceremony I'm joining in the morning, I was sharing about that yesterday, gives opportunities to forgive. There is room for upeka, equanimity, for patience, for friendliness. and for forgiving in every situation. Mm. Marta is sharing. Thank you, Marta. Thank you so much. That's generous. Sharing is generous. Sharing of our, how we are. Thank you, that was wonderful. I cried the whole way through, but I felt something shift in my heart. The heaviness of holding grudges. Yes. Yeah. Thank 
yeah and as i said like forgiveness really needs time and there goes a lot of grief with it mm. so if you have any questions um, which come together with the meditation or there could be questions from your daily life or any situation in your life, please feel free to ask. That's a generous gift to all of us. Laura says, this meditation was an invitation to love myself, to forgive myself and to love and forgive everyone. Yeah. So if Thank you, Laura, for sharing. If, if tightness comes up with this meditation or with this topic, another practice you could do is to look out for forgiveness, like the gift of forgiveness. Where has someone else forgiven you in life? I'd like to share a poem with from Rumi. He says, be ground, be crumbled, so wild flowers will come up where you are. You were stony for too many years. Try something different. Surrender. Be ground, be crumbled, so wild flowers will come up where you are. You were stony for too many years. Try something different. Surrender. Mm -hmm. What would be different? Hmm. Thank you, George, for putting it at the poem. Yeah. In the sense of forgiving, maybe it's also slowing down. If we let go of blaming, we can act in a more intelligent way. It's so common for us to blame. It's like a trance. We don't see the person anymore. We just see the story and make ourselves a victim. So what is your step today of Letting go of that pattern without forcing anything. <clears throat> I'm a bit curious to, to read, to hear how this meditation was going for you. There's a well-known Tibetan Buddhist story about two monks who encounter each other after some years, <clears throat> or they encounter each other years after they have been in prison. They've been released from prison where they had been tortured by their captors. And the first monk asked, have you forgiven them? And the second one says, I will never forgive them, never. And then the first one says, well, I guess they still have you in prison, don't they? So look out for the places where you keep yourself in prison. Mm -hmm. 
and bring kindness there. Make something different. Surrender. Jane shares, so helpful to be able to forgive myself instead of the constant need and feeling that I must forgive others all the time. Yeah, we don't. It's not, not a rule <laughs> to forgive others. <clears throat> and it's necessary to be free. Well, it's a process. Maybe a lifelong process. And meanwhile, you can follow the path where you can explore, experience freedom and joy and love and an open, relieved heart. It's like a dance between the openness of the heart and the closing of the heart. And that's what generosity is about. It's not, it's not only about giving, it's also about receiving. It's about the openness of the heart, the softness of the heart. Mm, Pat Patricia shares just what my heart needed. I need to befriend the hurt part so the tendency to hurt back and reactivity is not fed. Mm. Your heartfelt guidance is a beautiful model. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patricia. Yeah, befriend the hurt part in us. That's a practice. over and over again. I sometimes wonder where we would be without these hurts, because we couldn't do this practice of befriending our hurts. There's so much growth in that. Rumi says, where the wound is, the light comes in. Where the wound is, light comes in. And Mary Oliver, she says something like, someone once gave me a box full of darkness. It took me years to understand that this too was a gift. There is a question, I think. How do you get out of someone you cannot avoid is always attacking you with interpretation, statement, judgment. It is so hard for me to forgive that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Nicola, thank you for sharing. You don't have to forgive that. A practice you can do there is to reconnect to the goodness of that person, like to the purity of this person to the heart of the person because we all have that right we all have that that which is just light just joy just love and it's like covered and covered and covered like mountains on it it sounds as if it's more about protecting yourself protecting yourself take good care of yourself set boundaries and address on a deeper level. I can't accept that behavior. I don't want that behavior. I don't like that. And I don't accept that. And you don't have to forgive that behavior. But the person deep within, at least you can connect to the goodness. And forgiveness, you know, it can happen later. It's about the movement. Which direction are we going? Which direction are we going? It's not about being perfect. Sometimes it's enough to recognize that the small hurts are very temporary and will disappear in a matter of days. Yes, Anthea, thank you. Yes, Anita, definitely. And that's a, that's a gift of generosity, right? To be just being generous with others, um, wrong behavior, just to put it like that. And, and sometimes we can't. 
Sometimes we need to forgive first. Okay, thank you so much, dear people. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you know um, the gift you bring here through just, just showing up, really. There's a lot of gratitude um, from my side towards all of you, towards the platform here, towards life that we are all on this path. Isn't it amazing? It's a miracle. Thank you so much. Wishing you all well. Brothers, sisters. Mm -hmm.